Hey there, Internet. It's Kevin Coons here for 360 Today. I'm here with Richard Lacani, the director of Sea of Shadows, an amazing documentary that takes you inside the world of, what would you say? Well, <laughs> it takes us into the world of the cartels that are attacking an ocean in, in, in the upper Gulf of California. Uh, and that's basically, you know, like a, a crime that is happening. Um, sea of Cortez is getting attacked by criminals who want to harvest the Totoaba swim ladder from it and they destroy everything that they can find just to get that one fish and they make millions of dollars with that black market trade that goes to China. So that's what the film is about and covers truth behind this war going on three hours south of the U.S.-Mexican border. Um, in the film, you've compared this with uh, the cartels trading cocaine in terms of the value and the price and uh, the danger level, uh, you know, for AK-47 shots and all sorts. What would you say was the most dangerous or scary moment for you while filming this uh, documentary? Well, you know, the, the film is dangerous on, on many levels. Uh, a lot of the chase scenes, you know, the, the anti-coaching attacks that happened uh, were happening during the night. So we were attacked sometimes by by illegal ships that were trying to ram our ship or, or you know, they were, they were shooting at us. They shot down our drone. Um, but we also got into, like, this big riot, this spontaneous riot that broke out after the Navy had arrested a few fishermen. And suddenly we had, like, 300 fishermen trying to storm um, the Navy building, the Navy base, and we were between them and the base, and we had to run for our lives, and, you know, we had hundreds of rocks flying down on our heads, and we needed to, like, you know, somehow get out of there alive. So that was one of the, the high points of that movie in terms of, like, survival. It's amazing no one was injured while the Um I'm curious about the release for this movie. I know you were talking about it releasing in Mexico. You plan to release in China, where a lot of the trade uh, at the end of this happens. A lot of right. you see the price go from five thousand to a hundred thousand when it gets to China. So what I'm very curious is, will this show in China, and what what do you think their reaction will be? Well, the film will be released in China on the National Geographic channel, so that's going to happen sometime next year. Um, and it's very important for us that the Chinese people see it because that's where the demand comes from. So they need to be aware that this demand for Tsuaba is actually destroying an ocean, an ecosystem, you know, killing whales, dolphins, sharks that are being caught um, as bycatch in these thousands of nets that the cartel drops into the ocean. Um, so the Chinese should be aware, but on the other hand, you know, it is already illegal to sell and to buy or to trade Totoaba in China. So we don't need a change of the law, we just need a, like a stronger enforcement of, of, of the law in China. On the other hand though, the problem needs to be solved in Mexico, you know. We have less than 12 months left for the Vaquita. Um, the next killing season starts in December. Um, so only law enforcement on the front lines would actually make a difference. They need to go after the Chinese traffickers who are living in Mexico. They need to go after the cartel. They need to enforce the fishing ban on the waters. No illegal ships going out into the Paquita Refuge. Those things need to happen. They need to help the fishermen with alternative fishing gear, with solutions. After all, these are fishermen. You know, fishermen, you can't, like, bar them from going out to fish. They need to be able to fish, but in a sustainable way. So the solutions need to be found in Mexico, in this case, not in China, simply because we're out of time. I'm also curious, I feel like after the movie, the people are blurred because of the danger of showing their faces. Some of the people, even with their blurred faces, end up dead by the end of the movie. Having myself had to blur out faces for documentaries due to uh, concerns, how would you decide who you're going to blur and who not? Because it seems like a lot of people in the film are at risk of people just being in the movie and talking. Do you ask them ahead of time, are you okay with this risk? And how do you deal with that? And then you know, this well, look, some, some people in the movie are blurred um, because we needed to protect them and they were willing to speak to us, but only if we were to hide their identities. So these people, of course, we blur them top to bottom, their faces, their, we change their voice. We just want to make sure they're unrecognizable, even to people who live in San Felipe. 
But then there are the traffickers like the Chinese that we uncovered who are, you know, they are illegals, they are criminals, but they haven't been yet prosecuted. No judge has actually you know, said, declared them criminals and sentenced them to prison. So for us to show their faces without them having stand to the fair trial would be breaking another kind of law, you know. So uh, our company, National Geographic, just um, is not able to put these faces on camera without them officially being sentenced. Um, last question I have for you deals with the fact that why do it's all VR and 360? Um, have you seen Catherine Bigelow's uh, the protectors dealing with the elephants or you did the Ivor game? I'm curious to know, have you considered using 360 or VR in this film, or would you consider that moving forward with endangered animals? Look, it's too difficult to use that technology in films like that because you really need to be uh, very focused on just telling the story. And VR 360, some, you know, technically is very challenging. We would constantly have our crew in the image, you know, you would see the sound man, you would see things that kind of distract you from the actual story and the danger. So my priority is just to tell the story. That's the most important thing because we want to help save a species and it's less about the technicality of it. It's more about actually having an impact and changing the world and making it a better place. And I believe that, you know, we just need to be simple in this way because it's already challenging enough that we're trying to do. Totally. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Thank you so much for your time. Check out the film. It comes out tomorrow? Yeah, well, it's already launched in Los Angeles and New York on so, uh, so, Friday the 12th. So just check it out wherever you see this. You might be the watching theaters. this later. Find it, and it will be streaming eventually somewhere. Right, and seeofshadows.film is our website, so you can find all the theaters there. I'm going to link to it in the description below. Thank you again for making this incredibly powerful Thank you. film. Please come take a risk. Your date. I'm surprised you got bulletproof breaths here, man. Well, <laughs> <Crazy> <laughs> I'm not now. <laughs>